Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That, Africa Wednesday. Or Thursday, in this case. Yeah, sorry, but I could not control when Jacob Zuma announced that he was going to step down as president of South Africa. So yes, Jacob Zuma has retired after pressure from his party, the African National Congress. Although, this was probably not the most unexpected event in the world, because about a month ago, South Africa held an election for who would replace Jacob Zuma. And let me tell you, it is never a good sign when elections to determine your successor are happening more than a year before the next general election. That would be like if the Republican Party today held an election to determine who would replace Donald Trump as president should he, for whatever reason, stop being the president. That might inspire less confidence in his longevity as president than reading what his daily diet is and workout schedule. So, today we're going to be discussing what Zuma did and what his successor Cyril Ramaphosa is going to do, especially with Day Zero coming. So let's start with what's happening. I have therefore come to the decision to resign as President of the Republic with immediate effect. Can you really blame Zuma for retiring? I mean, he accomplished everything he set out to accomplish when he was elected president, from successfully spending 240 million of state funds on infrastructure on his own home, successfully spending $370,000 of state funding on cars for his four wives. Okay, now that might seem minor, and you're probably wondering, Stephen, why don't you just tell us the corruption charges that brought Zuma down? Well, because I'm trying to keep this episode around 10 minutes long, and there were 783 corruption charges against that guy. That said, I think when you pass into the triple digits of corruption charges, you have to start thinking to yourself, eh, one more can't hurt. From an economic standpoint, Zuma is interesting as well, as investors accuse him of being the reason South African bonds were downgraded to junk status, which is as bad as it sounds. Although never fear South Africans because it was reported that with the retirement of Jacob Zuma, bond prices jumped and the value of the South African rand gained over the dollar, which is definitely not a normal thing to happen when a country has recently overthrown their leader. Just imagine how bad for your economy you have to be when investors look and say, hey, you know that country that just overthrew their leader and has a looming water crisis that is threatening to destabilize the country more? All of a sudden, it looks like a pretty good investment. So let's meet that new president, Ciro Ramaphosa. President Ramaphosa emerged as an anti-apartheid actor, although it's hard to find a major player in South African politics who didn't fight the apartheid, as it is to find an American president who doesn't have close connections to Goldman Sachs. So what does this President Ramaphosa stand for? He seems to consistently champion one ideology. Now, Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa says radical economic transformation is not a new term in South Africa. Yes, President Ramaphosa wants radical economic transformation. Although it's not hard to imagine this would be less popular than his opponent, who happened to be Zuma's ex-wife's stance of, you know that guy we just threw out on corruption charges and ruining bond values? Yeah, let's keep doing his thing. So. What is radical economic transformation? Well, according to the Huffington Post, there are seven things you need to know about this economic change. First, we see that South Africa is trying to reindustrialize. What this means is that Africa is tired of their economic growth coming from export of raw materials and wants to transition towards actually making things. It's the difference between selling someone gold and diamonds and saying, hey, figure it out, and selling someone a diamond ring and marking it up several thousand percent. This economic evolution will be spurred by tax incentives for manufacturers to encourage a more stable economic growth and diversity. Oh, and speaking of diversity, let's go to point two, which is a little bit of a uh, collar loosener for me as a white guy, putting an emphasis on black ownership of land and business. Now, it's not as though systemic preference of a certain race is a new thing to South Africa. It's just that now it's designed to benefit the majority of people to equal out the playing field. South Africa is going to emphasize African business ownership through tax incentives. But how do you incentivize African land ownership? Think of it as diet annexation. 
There's currently a bill going through South Africa's Congress that would allow the government to take someone's land without their consent if the government pays them a set amount set by the Office of Valuer General. Next to dismantling monopoly structures and practices. Now this is key to President Ramaphosa's political ideology as he has largely ran an anti-corruption platform, although I think the largest anti-corruption thing he could have accomplished was beating President Zuma's ex-wife in the recent election. Now, This involves strengthening the Competition Act to end of price fixing and anti-competitive behavior, something that is about as non-controversial to South Africans as opposing the apartheid. Next to an end to cadre employment. You see, in recent times, the most important question you would have been asked for jobs in the public sector might not have been, why do you want this job or what are your qualifications, but more, who did you vote for in the last election? The goal here is to ensure that the most qualified rather than the most loyal candidates get hired. But this is definitely and unsurprisingly not the highest priority on the totem pole. Next to the state being in the driver's seat for development. Now this is an interesting one because President Ramaphosa let his socialist flag fly. This section of the ANC charter really criticizes radicals on both sides though as it sets a stake of 2 million federally funded public jobs a year rather than the fewer or the greater amounts desired by radicals on both sides. The sixth platform is policy continuity over policy change which Ow, my neck hurts from whiplash after that radical 180 policy shift. Never a good sign knowing your radical economic transformation includes a policy goal of continuity over political change. Basically, this means that the South African government will continue to pursue goals set in motion in 2012 to radically change the economy, which definitely negates the impact of the proposition of a radical economic shift. Lastly, we see which says that there are certain politics associated with passing these reforms, specifically because it gives a lot of power to government that has a shaky track record because half of their four presidents have resigned on corruption charges. Now, Many critics are throwing around the term state capture in which powerful groups control the state's policy decisions. This means that with the vague objective of increasing manufacturing, maybe the manufacturers of computer chips slide the government a few dollars to decrease regulations and pivot the developmental ambitions to their factories instead of the industries that would statistically benefit South Africa the most. Although President Ramaphosa is noted as saying that business should not be distracted by those who use the term radical economic transformation to justify state capture. But the government reassuring people that the government is not corrupt is not exactly the most convincing method of reassuring people that everything is fine. Now, I looked up his positions on other issues such as the impending water crisis, but besides declaring that he's going to form a committee of a lot of people and local leaders want to meet with him, there is yet to be a proposed solution. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that last video. For more episodes of Africa Wednesday, click here and click here to subscribe and remember to like our video down below. And if you're really a fan, you can join our Facebook group. It's just a party over there.